Dr. Roxanne before we baptize you. Explain you some things that are going to take place when you gather here. Now, we've talked about this some. You've expressed your desire to be baptized, and you've explained why you want to, and you've acknowledged that this is an act of obedience toward the Lord. It's actually something that's commanded in the scriptures, and the Lord doesn't command us to do things that aren't going to benefit us in some way. Rather, everything the Lord tells us to do, it's going to advantage us, always going to advantage us in our walk of faith. And so, like the scriptures say, it's like, His commandments are not grievous. This is not a grievous thing you're about to do. It's not something to be burdened about. You've heard the command, and you have acknowledged it's going to bear you in some way, now you're acting upon that desire. You're following through. And so, because of that, the Lord's going to do a work. The Lord Jesus said that those who believe and are baptized would be saved. So this is not just what you would say just a public witnessing of your faith, even though you are doing that, but it's much more than that. It's actually something associated with salvation itself. And we're very happy that you're not you haven't been held back from doing this thing that's going to advantage you. Another thing, just to encourage you, that baptism is actually associated with the forgiveness of sins. That when Saul of Tarsus, this is who we know as the Apostle Paul. He was going to persecute Christians. On the way to Damascus, the Lord Jesus appeared to him, and he became blinded. And so the Lord Jesus had the prophet Ananias come and pray for him. And then when Saul uh, received his sight, one of the things Ananias said to him is, Arise, be baptized, washing away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And Peter also wrote, saying that baptism now saves us, not the move of the filth of the flesh, but an answer of a good conscience toward God. And many who... In the scriptures, those who sought baptism, they were seeking forgiveness of sins. They were seeking a cleansed conscience from those sins. And baptism is actually said in Acts chapter 2, it's actually said to be for the remission of sins. And so the result of you doing this is you're going to have that cleansed conscience and you're going to have this realization that your sins have been forgiven and washed away by the blood of the Lamb. Lastly, in baptism we're dipped in the water, but this of itself is nothing. Rather, it's the working of God himself that makes baptism effective. Mm -hmm. Amen. Peter spoke about this again when he said baptism now saves. He followed by saying not the removal of the filth of the flesh. Now what that means is this is not just some empty, meaningless ceremonial procedure or just outward cleansing that may help you, like cleanse you outwardly but leaves you unchanged or unaffected inwardly. That's not what this is. Rather, this is something that this is a time, a point in time, where the Lord's going to actually work in you, do something to you. The scriptures call that the operation of God, Colossians chapter 2. This is like where God's going to do something that's going to benefit you. The fact is that when we're baptized, we're being joined to Christ. That's why it says you're baptized into Christ. It's, very word, it's worded very precisely. And this is not just like joining a sect. It's not joining a denomination. It's joining Christ himself. However, it's not us doing the joining. This is where the Lord does the work. The Lord joins you to Jesus Christ at this point. So you obey, and the result of your own obedience is divine assistance, a divine working by God himself. So those who are joined to Christ are most certainly better off. You're going to be better off as a result of this happening. Lastly, this is what the scriptures call the form of the doctrine. Mm -hmm. the, the doctrine is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He died Amen. for sins, he was buried, and then he was raised again, he has ascended into heaven. The form of that doctrine is baptism. Mm -hmm. You're going to display these three things outwardly. Death, you go down in the water, burial, you stay there, and then come back up. Resurrection. But at the same time, those three things are going to be accomplished inwardly as well. You're going to go down and die to sin. <clears throat> You're not, long, you're not going to be bound to it. It's not your master. You die to it. You're buried, and then when you raise up, it's called walk. You're raised to walk in newness of life. That's how the scriptures say it. Raised, it's like, it's a, it's actually involves a change in direction, a change of life itself. It actually changes the way that you live. And so you rise out of the waters, alive to God. Changed, so to speak. And this is the thing that makes it so effective, is that it's, it's by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The baptism now says it's not the rule of the filth of flesh, the answer to good conscience toward God, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the thing you want to get. You're being joined to a living Christ. If Christ is not raised, if Christ isn't risen, you're not being joined to anything here, and this is absolutely a waste of time. But he is not. He's not still dead. He is raised from the dead. And that, that Jesus who is alive now and working and saving men now, 
that's who you're being joined to. Amen. So before we do this, we'll have you do do a confession. You confess to me. All we want you to do is just tell us who Jesus is. <sighs> Jesus is the Son of God who was sent from heaven to die for our sins. He is the Lamb of the Lord. His blood is pure and uh, uh, <laughs> struggling over words. <laughs> um, his blood is so pure that we uh, that there is <laughs> no other need to pay for mm -hmm. our debt. Mm -hmm. Very good. Amen. 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 All right. Well, have you step in the water? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> Does it matter which way? Oh, well, just, just yeah. sit yourself down. Okay. Whatever <laughs> way makes you comfortable. Oh, it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sister yeah. Roxanne, because of the confession of your faith, and because of your acknowledgement that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 You have a book, let's sing this song together. <laughs> Number 487, Now I Belong to Jesus. Sister Roxanne, one of the great blessings of baptism is becoming a part of the body of Christ, which Brother Jonathan has shared. And I wish to thank him for doing this as well. For um, This actually supports this, um, this little exhortation. Because, you see, the body is one. The spirit is one. And, and though it is made up of many members, the body is one. We have all been baptized into the same spirit. And we all drink into the same spirit. The continued understanding and learning of these things come after you have been baptized. Now, there are certain other things that you, will, that you did not receive until after you were baptized. These things that we can see are examples in Scripture such as the Ethiopian eunuch who went on his way rejoicing after he was baptized. The jailer was, not, the jailer was filled with joy because of his belief in God after he was baptized. Jesus Christ, by whom we must be saved, did not begin his recorded ministry, the bulk of his recorded ministry on earth until after he was baptized. The apostle Peter told those that were present on the day of Pentecost, that they, would not receive, that they would receive the gift of the Holy Spirit after they were baptized. The Ephesians did not prophesy until after they were baptized. The Apostle Paul's sins, as Brother Jonathan said, were not washed away until after he was baptized. Now, Sister Roxanne, you had expressed your desire to be baptized, and Brother Jonathan baptized you, and you have been baptized into the name of, the, of our great Redeemer. And that was your answer of a good conscience toward God. In baptism, you, in baptism, you died and were buried with Christ. In this, your sins were removed. Your sin was taken to the grave, just as the sin of the world was taken to the grave with Christ. Upon your resurrection, you inherited a new man. Your intent will no longer be about trying to keep from sinning, but your intent will be upon doing that which is pleasing to him. You will be Christ-minded, aware of what he is doing, and the work that is going to be going on in you.